the morning. My uh, dad got me up and I couldn't stand up. I was completely paralyzed. So they took me to the hospital and I do recall uh, having a spinal tap. They took my clothes away. I was, I think I was five or six. And uh, put, rolled me up in a ball, stuck a needle in my spine. I remember the pain of that. And then they put me in a dark room. All I remember is it was a crib and I wasn't a baby. I remember another voice of another boy that was in the same room and younger than 10 years old age range. And you're in, thrown into an environment where people are dying your age and they're rolling them out dead. And you know you could die and you know you're disabled and you know that you're very much aware that the community sees this as the scourge of the community and you have it. Nobody knows when you come out if you could give it to them. So you have to come out of that hiding your disability if you have any. And to make that possible, you have to deny that you ever had it to yourself. So you have to pretty much put it out of your mind. I'm going to learn the best way to walk. Gonna search and find me a better way to talk. Spit and polish my old rough head self Till I get rid of every single flaw The first thing I remember noticing was uh, pain in my throat uh, from singing. My throat would burn, the muscles would burn in my neck and throat. Then I started having problems with my hands. I always knew that I had had polio. I knew it affected my breathing. I knew that I had been uh, paralyzed. In the back of my mind, where I could drop a curtain over it, the facts were there, uh, but I never lifted that curtain. Post-polio is, if you manage it right, um, it could be no problem at all. But you got to manage it right and uh, live with it. That means that I have to uh, have that uh, assistive device, which is a bi-level ST, uh, to make up for the weak breathing muscles so that I get enough oxygen in and enough carbon dioxide out to keep my organs and muscles healthy. Greatest misconception is that it doesn't exist. The first thing they tell you is it's all in your head. Uh, then they say, oh, well, yeah, it could be fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue. You know, a lot of different things can cause, cause this. But if you had polio and you don't have something else, and that's the misconception that a lot of doctors say, no, you don't. Take these pills and go away. That's the worst problem. I just don't know how to get past it, and, but that's what we're constantly working on. What it takes is getting the person with post-polio to fully understand themselves and to fight for their own cause. Uh, I don't know of, I know of very few people who have been able to manage themselves successfully without the help of a good doctor who understands post-polio or one that's willing to learn from a patient who knows already. And the big challenge again is that the people who have post-polio that are strong enough to do something are the ones that are in denial.